Hi, I'm Stephanie and this is my home, the 16th century Chateau de la Lande. La Lande was owned for hundreds of years by a family of marquises who were at the heart of French royal life. One of them even had the honour of being sent by King Louis XV to greet Marie Antoinette on her arrival in France. But, far from being a stuffy museum, this chateau is a living home. I live here all the time and I'm regularly joined by my mother, my family, my friends and wonderful volunteers from all over the world who help me to lovingly restore this historic home. Welcome to La Lande, a chateau filled with life, love and laughter. I did it! I made it to New York. It involved leaving France and going for two weeks to Barbados because it is still impossible to fly straight to the US from Europe during this time of COVID. It's blocked, you have to go somewhere else for two weeks first and I can't believe it worked. After the whole holiday to Barbados, I had to find somewhere quite reasonably priced, but actually this place is amazing and I already know I would come back next time I'm in New York. I slept like a log. It's a little pod. The bed basically fills the entire pod. I've got a little workstation and there's amazing lighting in it. That's the bathroom, this little sink area over there. So there's all the space that I need. It's actually really lovely. I'm here just in time for my Christie's collaboration that starts this morning. So we better get moving. Here we are, just arriving at Rockefeller Center. I think the entrance is just around the corner. I'm really excited because Jill is going to take us into the silver vaults today. I know. We may never come out. I've been to Christie's so many times with my father and to actually come here to work with them is so special. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm Jill Waddell, head of the Silver Department. This is Chris June. Hi. I'm excited to give you the backstage tour. <laughs> what fun things can we do today? Uh, everything. We will definitely take a tour of the Silver Vault that I share with the Ceramics Department. We'll see the sales room, and there is some auctioneer's training happening right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we'll see some exhibitions being set up. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, where do you want to start? Let's get started. Well, actually, I want to start with the amazing bars. If we just walk past, because it's beautiful. It's so beautiful. You get to look, Mark, surrounded by beauty all the time. And it spins. It spins. No. So no. can see the scenes. I have never, ever seen so anything <laughs> like this. So what's this scene? Oh, more cheap. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and what's the other one? Probably less raunchy. She's preparing for the meeting. She's, yeah, she is. Oh, it's beautiful. Maybe we leave this one towards the end. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Seb. Yes, this is Seb, and this is in the collector sale. I'm kind of scared to touch it, but I'll love it if it is. You can touch it. Let's spin it. Yeah, yeah, you can spin it. Everything is here to be inspected and touched and oh, looked over. Heavy. <laughs> That's smooth. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That is surprisingly smooth. Well, this is incredible. I've, I've discovered already, and I've been here for five minutes. <laughs> this is not something I've never seen before. Fantastic. We're going to see some more stuff. I'm sure we're going to see a yeah. lot more things. Cool. <laughs> Stephanie, this is Christina. She is our books and manuscripts specialist. Hi. Really and love she this She can movie. tell you a little bit about what she has for sale. This whole case, in fact, is uh, first editions of novels by Jane Austen. Oh, um, first editions. Yeah, including, you know, one of her most loved, uh, Crime and Prejudice. I'll take that out for you. Oh, my goodness. So this was uh, published in 1813 uh, in London, published anonymously. Um, she is not yet named. Oh, how and moving. It's just, it, I absolutely agree. I mean, it's just such a thrill to be able to hold in your hands and you know read those famous first That's lines um, as they were written, and just to think that you know this ink on this paper, the first time it was read, people had never heard that before. Am I allowed to hold it? Yes, please. Well, this is a big moment for me. I studied English literature, so for me, oh, this really? is yeah, this is heaven. This collection is just exceptionally strong in novels and English and American novels. An absolute treat. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. <laughs> Pleased to show it to you. The binding on Pride and Prejudice is, is a 19th century binding, so it's it's contemporary, but not not how the book was issued. Oh. Um, the publishers were not producing uh, bindings themselves. They would have bought the book 
um, just in plain boards, like this first edition of Emma. So this is just incredibly rare because that's pretty much how you would have gotten it. And that's yeah. how they would have first read it, and then if they yeah. liked it, they're, oh wow, yeah, this is bind it up. Or if, you were, if you were fancy, you might have it yes. bound up right away. I mean, surely in days before television or internet, I think you mm. wouldn't want to wait for the binders before mm -hmm. reading. If a new novel came out, you must have been. Yeah, I want to read it now, right away. Right now, yeah, now. exactly. And you notice these are. Um, these are both three volumes, which is not a coincidence, and so is yes. Sense and Sensibility, and it's because they were often uh, sent to lending libraries, so you'd get the first volume, pass it along to the next person, yes. you'd be busy reading the second. Oh, fascinating. <laughs> um, so that was a very common format for, uh, for novels. Thank you so much. Want to go check out some prints? Definitely. Liechtenstein, Warhol, it's just crazy. Oh, no. Picasso, oh, I love this one. This is beautiful. Mm -hmm. How do you cope with not being able to buy every single thing you see here and take it home? <laughs> is it, is it well, tough? It luckily is. for yeah. us, everything is really expensive. <laughs> you can't buy it anyway, so you just don't think about it too much. <laughs> and you get to see it, at least. Yes. Yeah, it's like working in a museum. Every few days, we put up a new exhibition, new things come out, um, and it's a great way to train your eye because you're constantly exposed to things that you wouldn't necessarily be paying attention to. Yes, I'm sure that even in the background without you realizing, you're learning all the time. Constantly absorbing. I love this, lovely. I know, it's such a happy place to walk into every day with these bright colors. And this one's by uh, the artist Soloit. I so love So we call this. it the Soloit Lobby. Soloit Lobby. I love the primary colors. It is so cheerful. <laughs> Those are the west galleries, these are the east yes. galleries, um, which is where we have kind of the, the big space, it's some more huge. natural light. So this will be where like some of the big, we call them marquee weeks, 20th century, impressionists in mm. post-war. Um, but right now we're kind of, they're empty. We're repainting for Asia week, oh. which we always kind of think of as like the start of the season. Oh, so okay. Asia week is in September. Things are kind of quiet. There's not many sales through the summer. And so Asia week yeah. is the big, Boom. yes, everything is we're starting. Back. And we go straight from Asia week into classic week into 20th century week. And it's, it just all kind of flies awesome. from there. Yeah. Um, so Asia week is Chinese works of art, Chinese paintings, Japanese art, Korean art, Indian Southeast Asian, mm. contemporary things. So what do you um, have coming up this everything. time? So yeah, this time we've got a little bit of everything. Um, some really cool little silver pieces, paintings. The one I'm excited for, though, is the Japanese art sale. One of my favorite things from, from the week. Um, Japanese figures of uh, turtles and lobsters and bugs. And they're all incredibly lifelike. They're made out of iron yeah. and all articulated. So you get little movement of the joints. Seriously. And the antenna. I don't um, think I've ever they're seen They're really any. cool. There's a collection of, the, I think it's 12 or so little bugs. And there's my favorite is this wasp, um, which of course everything moves. But if you tilt the back a little bit, the stinger pops out the no. back. And then it can go right back in. And what sort of size are all of these things? All life size. So the well, the bugs are a little bit bigger. The wasp is about that okay. big. Um, but then, yeah, lobsters, lobster size. The carps are carp size. So everything okay. is, is life size. I'm going to be looking up that so, so really, I can look at them. Really, really cool. So yeah, I mean, the whole week is full of insanely amazing yeah. ceramics and, and what have you. But hmm. that's something kind of unique that it doesn't come up as often, but it's really cool when you get to see them. <laughs> Do you sometimes find that you're discovering totally new things that you knew nothing oh, about? all the time. I mean, I have my focus. And then, of course, all the things you see in museums normally. Yeah. but. Yeah, wandering through the galleries when you're on a lunch break and just need a little distraction, you yeah. always come across something that you haven't seen before or a new artist that you then go back and look up more of because um, yeah. you fall in love with their work. So and then you keep you getting know. down rabbit holes. Exactly. <laughs> when you should be doing your own work, <laughs> your own cataloging, but then you're looking at another department stuff. <laughs> Jill's offered to take us to auctioneer training, which honestly sounds a bit like Hogwarts to me. I mean, it's, wow, these people get trained. This is absolutely. <gasps> well, wait till you see it, because it kind of looks like Hogwarts, but in space. Hogwarts in space. Yeah. Okay, let's go let's see go. Hogwarts in space. So let's go upstairs. Here we have the sales room. I love to, I just got totally distracted oh. by handbags. <laughs> we used to share a vault with the yes. handbags department. And it was a lot of fun, but it was really hard to get anything done. <laughs> the second floor is going to have our sales room. And then I'll take you up to the third floor afterwards, which has all of our viewing rooms, where when you are watching the sale and you are a big spender, you might not want to be seen bidding. Or if property you're selling comes up for sale, you might not want to be 
seen in the sales room, but you still want to be part of the action. So that's where you can go and drink champagne and pace nervously and watch the sale. So it's a little bit like the private mezzanine in a chapel. Yes, basically. exactly. It's the Royal mm -hmm. Gallery. Mm -hmm. I didn't know you had that. Oh, yes. <gasps> We're just going to peek in on auctioneer training. Yes. This is our sales room. Uh, the whole sales room has been revamped since COVID so that we can social distance. It's much more theatrical than it used to be. It's a little space-like. It is. It's like a courtroom almost mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So come on in. This is where the phone bidders sit, and then the auctioneer is up at the podium. This podium is a reproduction of the original, which was made for James Christie by Thomas Chippendale. Chippendale made the very first Christie's mm -hmm. podium? Yep. Well, mm -hmm. I'm learning a lot of new things yeah. today. And was that in London? That was first, in London. The very mm -hmm. first Christie's in London. The first Christie's in London uh, opened in 1766, and we've been around ever since, uh, continuously. These screens, which are right now showing our colleagues in London, this is where the auctioneer can see where the online bids are coming in. Has anyone ever bid accidentally? Because I think that's everyone's time. worst nightmare going into a... It happens, you know, it happens probably once every sale. Oh. Uh, they bid on the wrong lot, or yes. they, they bid higher than they were expecting to, or they got confused about where the bid was going. Yes. And usually when that happens, we can scale it back and cancel the lot and do it over again. Okay. So they don't have to no. No, no, no. We're spend not, a we're million not on a We're not going to bankrupt them. <laughs> no. And in, usually in those cases, when they accidentally buy the wrong lot, there was someone else who really wanted that lot. Yes, yeah, so it can go to the underbidder. Yes. Okay. So everyone here is practicing uh, auctioneer training. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Christie's. Welcome to the sale of the private collection of Jane Weitzman. Um, thank you all for being here. Thank you on the phones. Thank you online. And thank you in the room. 6,000. Thank you. 6,557. Five, at 6,000. At 7,000 in the new place. Thank you very much. 75 with me. At 8,085. 9,095. Plenty of interest. 10. 11. At 11,000 with me. With my current book. 12,000. And I'm out. Thank you very much. It's with London at 12,000 online. Selling that to panel 604. Sold for 12,000, thank you. Panel number 604. Now, back that number. Right, sold. And sold is a celebration. It's our favorite word around here. <laughs> everybody's happy to buy. Everybody's happy to sell. So that's a, that's the balloons come down. The confetti and we can it up and we move on to the next slide. Let's go see the private viewing rooms. Oh, yes. I can dream that one day I'll be in one of those rooms. I believe you will be. <laughs> We have five of them, um, and they're pretty comfy. You want to go see? Definitely. Okay. This is where, during the sale, you can really watch everything that's going on from a bird's eye point of view. So do they see it both on the screen? They can see the auctioneer on the screen and through the window. Mm -hmm. And through the window. And the windows are semi one way. So if you're sitting yes. down on the floor, if you're looking up, you can sometimes see maybe the silhouette of a person in yes, here. Yes, can't see who it is. No, unless mm -hmm. you're really like using binoculars and then that's really obvious. So. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're bidding, you can use that phone, which will connect you with your designated phone bidder down yes. in the phone bank. And you can put your biz in, and they will execute them for you. So this is where the champagne is usually flowing. Yes. yes. Champagne? Mm hmm Yes. Snacks. Get them in the mood. Absolutely. <laughs> Loosen them up. More bidding. <laughs> no. Brilliant. We want, our, we want our bidders to be comfortable. <laughs> this is the dream. The dream. <laughs> One day. So on the way to the Silver Ball, which we are so excited to show you, uh, I just want to pop over here and show you this really cool lot coming up in the exceptional sale that Chris is working on. Ooh. Yeah, love these. These are 19th century, so I moonlight as a lot of things in this department, <laughs> but 19th century sculpture. Gorgeous, gorgeous bronze busts sculpted by uh, Guimond, but they're cast by Christoffel in their bronze with this incredible kind of patination. We've mm. got uh, polychrome coloring going on. There's some silvering on their fans. There's gilding, all of the Japanese textiles and, and papers and art that's coming into France at the time, um, yes. sometimes for the first time, to get these sort of cloud form details on the jackets. The detail of the fabric, when you yeah. consider that that's cast, it feels as though it's fabric. Looking exactly. at her jacket, well, her kimono. All the little creases, all the folds.
folds, the way she's wearing it, the way it hits against yes. her body. Was it the beginning of Japanese? We're coming into France? yeah, right around then. Yeah, as you start to get uh, kind of Japanese in the style in the 1860s, 1870s. So yeah, this yes, is uh, exactly right around that. 1875. And they were originally shown at the Paris um, exhibitions. After they were shown at the Salon, they have a kind of whole history to them oh, of, they have. of exhibitions. So still working on our research, still working on our cataloging. And you're in charge um, of the cataloging. Cataloging for this for this lot specifically. Yeah. Every time you have to catalog something, you have to do a deep dive. Deep dive, seeing, I mean, these have been sold at auction before, so pulling those auction records. Yes, there's scholarship coming out all the time. Anything mm. that we can add to it. About uh, the artist's really life, helpful. who cast it, where it's been, what collections it's belonged to. Yeah, um, yeah. And then just talking about culture at the time, what brought these around, what sources they were looking at, especially for something as exceptional as, as these these busts. It sounds as though you're going to be ready to write a master's on these by the end yes, of the Yes, unfortunately, <laughs> they only give me about a page or two. So, <laughs> but as much as I'm allowed to write and as much as we can fit into the catalog. They are yeah. spectacular. They truly are. You said it was Christophe? Is that the yes. same one of the cutlery? Yes, it is. Yes, they did a lot of stuff. So, um, I mean, all the glass work, the silver, the flatware, um, but then they were casting busts, full sculptures, lighting, uh, really kind of a, a huge output at the I time. I didn't realize. I always just associate them with cutlery. Yeah, I and they were the realize. ones, this kind of they, really pioneering at the time, this combination of the polychrome decoration with the silvering, mm. with the gilding on the um, bronze. But they were mm. the best, one of the best at the time for combining all of these techniques yeah. to their, their greatest extent. It's wonderful because we can walk past so many beautiful things here, but the more you know about something, the yes. more beautiful it becomes as well. Everything that, that goes into it and everything yes. behind it. Do you have any idea what sort of estimate these will have? Ooh, these are, I want to say, around 100 to 150, somewhere around 100,000. Yeah. Right. Well, maybe a little maybe. higher than that, but yes. <laughs> Especially Some very the lucky pair. person is uh, maybe oh, going definitely. to be sitting in the room that we were just in bidding exactly, on these. Exactly, exactly. We'll see come October. <laughs> we'll get them some champagne. Yes, yes. <laughs> so whoever buys yes. this <laughs> will need that. Hey, this is Ryan. He Hi. is going to be our photographer for the next two days. Oh, well, fantastic. To help us with our vignettes. So you'll be over at the warehouse with us. Yep. I'm so excited. Is this where you you do video or just photography? Uh, just photography and yeah. for larger works and uh, all sizes of paintings. I've been really curious to see this because you sent me some little snapshots of lots at the very beginning before they were photographed for the catalogue and then I saw the same objects photographed for the catalogue and wow, the difference. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful what you do. Thank it's, you. It's Thank really you. extraordinary. And so this is how it's done. Yep, this is how it's done. This is for our sculptures, our sweep set. Yeah. I couldn't understand how there was no seam, you know, at the bottom right, yep. of the room or the water. So that's it. Yep. It's a curve. Yep. It's ingenious. We shoot light at it from both ways to give you yeah. an even spread. And um, usually we have the property a little bit towards the front and we light it separately from the background. You know, mirrors fully reflective, so mm. we'll have to build a whole set around them. Some other things a little bit more straightforward, yeah. maybe like a wooden piece that's, you know, pretty uh, forgiving with lighting. So the mirror is yeah. the nightmare, that's the worst. <laughs> that's the nightmare. <laughs> Do you have any mirrors tomorrow? <laughs> Quite a few, yeah. actually. Yeah, we went a bit crazy on choosing mirrors. Yeah. Sounds fun. Okay, well, we'll yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll cross that bridge tomorrow. Totally. I'm going to show them the silver vault now, but we shall see you tomorrow morning. Great. Yeah. All see right. you tomorrow. Bye. See you tomorrow. You ready to do some silver shopping? Yeah. Okay. This feels like going to Grimwald's. Yes. 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 It really does. Well, let's go. <gasps> Oh. <laughs> uh, I'm, oh, the candlesticks. These are coming up in the exceptional sale. <gasps> Same sale as those busts. Yes. As those busts that we just looked at. These were made for the fourth Duke of Richmond for Goodwood House, which had a terrible fire in the 1790s. And so the third Duke started a renovation mm -hmm. of the, the main floor. Um, they got through quite a bit of room, and then he passed away, and then the fourth duke, new fourth duke, took over and finished the job. Uh, it was extremely expensive. He spent a lot of money. He had excellent taste in silver, <laughs> as oh, evidence. Yes. Uh, but what's really cool here is that we still have these classical elements, like the acanthus um, and the heraldic finial, 
But then we're also starting to get this um, sense of egyptomania coming in. Yes. And you see that with these, these little pairs of feet here and this geometric ornament going to these masks, which are are still kind of classical, but they're still starting to verge on Egyptian. Yeah, the, the, the bust area especially is starting to feel a bit sphinx-like. A bit sphinx-like, exactly. But my favorite part of these is right here. <gasps> these fabulous little dolphins just kind of spewing water spurts to create these sconces. I hadn't noticed that they were dolphins. And if you can imagine what these would have looked like in candlelight, you guys have these wonderful candles mm. here that are playing off of these gadroon yes. fluted surfaces. They're all kind of very lightly tooled, so you get this wonderful interplay. And that was for the play of light. Mm -hmm. So the light would bounce around. These are um, Benjamin Smith, London, 1808. These were on loan to the Metropolitan Museum of Art since 1983. So this is the first time since then they're going the, to be going mm -hmm. into the market. Exactly. This is our cataloging station. That's my end, very messy over there. It's Chris's end, mm. very clean and organized <laughs> over here. Um, <laughs> over here, beyond this little wall, is where all the sparkle happens. I wanted to ask about the cleaning. So this is our cleaning station. Mm. So we have a professional cleaner who cleans everything. He's been doing this for 32 years. So he has a very big job. A huge job. Mm -hmm. And he has basically seen everything um, and is an incredible resource for us. So it's not you and Chris at no. these sinks? No, no, no. Uh, occasionally we will jump in if and there's an emergency. one thing if there's yes. an emergency. But otherwise, um, Monty, our art handler, does a great job. Mm. Speaking of cleaning, <gasps> This mirror is from the Guest family, and it's Fabergé, and it's being sold in London. But, as you can see, it has not been cleaned in many, many decades. Mm. So, Monty has been working on this for about a week. And after a week, it's still, like, this is how long it takes. Yes, so he ha is now just getting through to silver, beyond the tarnish, <gasps> on this little bird. Uh, and still working on this cartouche, but it's going to take him a really long time. Well, this is a labor of love. I this mean, is a labor of love. Piece. Mm -hmm. But just something truly incredible, and I'm so disappointed that we're sending it to London because I really want to sell it. <laughs> <laughs> I know, that, that, to be whipped away from you. I know, I really want to put it in the vignettes. Yeah, that's, that was just the missing piece, mm -hmm. come to think of it, for the dressing table mm -hmm. vignette. Mm -hmm. That's the one. Mm -hmm. We found it. But it must be the most satisfying job being the silver cleaner. Yes. To see this coming back to life. Mm -hmm. For something like this, the reason why it's taking so long is because you really have to kind of let this polish sink in. And we use Haggerty Silver Foam, which is a very, very mild, non-abrasive silver cleaner. We don't want to do anything that's going to strip the patina. Mm. And so you just have to do it delicately and, and in sections. You get it really, really soapy. You let it sit for a little while. You clean it. You come back to it. You do the same thing all over again. To slow. It's slow. Mm. Mm. So what are we going to use tomorrow? <laughs> this is shopping. We're, ba we're basically shopping. We are shopping. Mm -hmm. We're shopping for the vignettes that we are going to be making. Four. Four vignettes. Mm -hmm. Four vignettes. Well, I think we need a lot of silver. I think yes. so. Yes. Well, obviously, I think so. What is a vignette without silver? <laughs> mm -hmm. Is so. that a lobster up there? The silver lobster? <laughs> it is. <Yeah. laughs> and you will notice that it says dead property because this is a group of property that has been a basically abandoned, oh. or the owners have left it for sometimes decades. And uh, you would be surprised how many lots people just don't pick up. That's an abandoned lobster. <laughs> yeah. Poor thing. It's an abandoned lobster. Well, I think that there are so many things that I would love to use. Hilariously, we thought we were going to use this, but we didn't realize how huge it was. I think that's ah. that's going to be overkill for our yeah. vignette. It's pretty heavy. And the, the busty yeah. griffins, as I call them. A busty griffin? Busty griffins. Oh, uh, that's well. how I like my griffins. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put this down now because it's really <laughs> heavy. Yes. But I'm going to guess that the heaviest thing in here is something we can't use, sadly, because I'd oh. love to use it, but the tea tray. Oh, yes. This is great. So this is, a, this is German, late 19th century. Really beautiful, really super heavy. 
and the tray comes off. Oh, in case you move away from the table and it's too much of a hassle to go back to the table. You can so leave this can... set up at the side of the room looking beautiful and then mm. carry this around to serve the tea to everybody. And it secures with little pins right by the little round heads. It's also brilliant. not easy to clean. Took I, a long time. Yes, I'm really glad I don't have that job. I love the little musical instruments. Mm -hmm. We've got a tambourine over here. What is that called? Like a little lyre? Lyre, that's it. Photo. For what period is this? This is late 19th century. We are going to spend a lot of time looking through all of these amazing things and choosing what we would like for tomorrow. Plus, we have a preliminary look. Let's go over to Natty Cam at La Lande and a little bit of Dan Cam too, so that you can see the progress that's been going on there. It's a big day in La Lande. How excited are you, Dan? I, I just want to take this moment. Yeah. What are you planning to do first? It's a pergola. A hole everywhere. Holes everywhere. Mm -hmm. He wants to put holes everywhere. Fantastic. I like that attitude. I'm going to get that to get the shot up. Oh. I think it looks quite nice. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> what happened? That's a digger. It's there, it's ready to get off. Oh. Looking good. <laughs> Go and see if it works. Holes everywhere. <laughs> right. What's going on here? Stephanie no. wanted to do to know. She spared no expense. <laughs> you have to teach me how to use it. Well, it won't be difficult, I can assure you. <laughs> Even you'll be able to use it. Right, that. where's my digger? It's there. <laughs> Holes everywhere. I have you feel. You don't seem very excited. <laughs> he doesn't deserve a digger, does he? No, it's, I think it's, it's you wanted a mini digger. Him. Mini digger. You you were specific. That's a mini digger. <laughs> Can we film the first hole in the ground? Oh, there you go, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think we need something to oh. touch. You oh. didn't bring all the tools for it either. <laughs> <laughs> Jack and Thomas are going to be super happy with that. <laughs> you. <laughs> I'd just like to thank Stephanie and all the patrons for making this possible. First hole. Alright, so where's my f***ing digger? <laughs> Here we are. Ah, it was a little bit bigger than expected. It's not that mini. No. <laughs> Here goes better. <laughs> not always. <laughs> Handprints everywhere. Ha yes, what is that? Oh, you'd be polishing it up and everything. We're well, off Dylan because he was supposed to clean it yesterday. Dylan cleaned it. So how do you feel about the selection? Are we? It's good. Exciting. Yeah, it's good. It's a lot. It's going to yeah. be gorgeous. I'm so excited. Yeah. yeah, yeah, me too. It's been a lot of fun in here with both of really you. It's been really fun. It's been really fun. sad to leave the silver vaults now. Mm. Okay, well, we will leave you. I know you're still doing loads of packing up. Yeah. See you both tomorrow. See you tomorrow. We'll see okay. you then. See you at the warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. 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 A huge thank you to all of our patrons who make this vlog possible and the Dauphins and Dauphines of La Lande, Yadel and Ether, Alice Allen, Dan Bander, Wailing Banshee, Brian Barnard, Brandon and John, Michael, Cecilia Begum, Denise Behrens, Danelle Benakovich, Jill Bidwell, Candice Blackburn, Candice Ned Borkowski, Clara Butcher, Paulina Calabro, Chloe Chalakani, Lindsay C. Chelton, Steve and Sarah Cole, Linda Sue Concepcion, Erin Conklin, Zoe Dork, Sylvia Dem, Jim Demersman and Richard Patternord, Sakura Dennis, Zane Dixon, Jason Dubby, Jackie Allison, Nicholas W. Fairfax, Tracy Ferrari, Caroline Furster, Kevin Fossum, Abigail Grant, Fifi Green, Greenberg, Crystal Hardy, Brenda Harris, Delaine Holbrook, Kim Hasselhoff, David and Tong Henderson, Camilla Herrera, Jacqueline Holmes and Ken Bates, Priscilla Hoob, Lissandra Hawley, Melissa Jansen, Brian Kelsey and Phil Burnt, Jimmy Kemp, Nadia Kennedy, Lisa LaForge, Dave and Summer Lalande, Morgan Lawley, Angel Leonard, Victoria Lapine, Janet Huff Lombard, Marina Frank Martin, Meredith Robert Miller, Joanne Morton, Karen Nicholson, Kathy Nori, Maureen Palmer, Ellen Person, Wendy Piatek, Frank Poposki and James Snow, Tamara Price, Armin Rahman, Tonya Renee, RJB, Bettina Rojek, Hanny Ross, Mary Ryan, Elizabeth Scanlon, Sven Schreiber, Lisa Schultz, 
Wallace, Jennifer Shanks, Rebecca Shorrock, Carl and Laurie Siebert, Teresa Sloan, Patty Suhu, Susan Stevens, Monty Stipura, Sabrina Surratt, and the Leaf House, Sarah Thornton, Colleen Troyer, Renee Vallelli, Victoria, Jessica Walker, Brandy Walton, Laura Watkins, Lucas Wallen, James Whalen, Cheryl Whitaker, Linda Wiest, Christine Wilson, Winnie de la Cocopoo, Greg Wood, David Young, and Lodovico Zordonazzo.